this piece of hexi bar I used was 24 mil and the large one's 22 so I need to take one mil off each flat I could have made out a round bar but I just happened to have the hex that wasn't any the right size to do that I'm going to use a collet block, a hexi collet block I'm going to clamp it in there and then index it around for the six sides taking one mil off each side so one mil off there, one mil off there, two mil two off 24 is 22 Right, so the coloured block simply goes into the vise, nip it up. I want enough bolt. Proud of the, proud of there, just so we can get a cutter in, and that wants to be lying flat or horizontal. So what we'll do, we'll put a steel ruler on there, and we'll eyeball it to get it 90 degrees. You could measure it. But I'm sure I can get within a couple of degrees just eyeballing. Right, that's pretty good. And obviously you could measure between the bed and there and the bed and there and you would get it absolutely spot on. Kind of just work into a degree of accuracy that I need. Right, so we'll tighten this up. Stupid head. Screw on your bastard here. Yeah. Make sure I've got enough cutter to tune. This table axis off just so we don't have any disasters. So, so it's just touching, which it is there. We'll start it up. Right, so it's just touching there. I'm going to dial in a one mil cut. Should take one mil, no problem. I think I'll put water on because it is, it is stainless and it will get warm. And it's a nice new cutter, and I don't want to damage it. Try it dry just to interest. Once water. Right, so that's the first one. Here's it to turn the machine off when you're going to put your hand near there. You don't want to be getting your hand stuck in there. It'll only happen once. Right, so loosen the face off. Turn it over to the next one. Bastard. Have your thoughts. Meant to be 316 in this, but it's machining. It's very tough. It's not wanting to, not wanting to play. When I was machining it in the layer, that was next one.
I'm going to take the freeze rod chuck off and put the collar chuck on because obviously the jaws on there will damage the, the threads where the collar chuck grips are a much bigger area and it won't damage the threads oh. Bastard! That, wee, that, that nut just caught my finger nail just nice there Right. Can't emphasize how clean this tape needs to be to retain accuracy. Excellent. All the little chips out of the collet. Make sure that's clean in there as well. Right. Right, I need to find out how thick he wants the heads before I put the doomed effect on them. He did send us a picture, so I'll go and have a look at that and see if I can work it out. Next weekend is our local steam rally. It's probably the only steam rally we're going to get now this year, being given the current situation. I'm taking both my stationary engines down. And I'll be running these on live steam from Richard's central steam engine boiler. There's one or two bits and pieces I need to sort out before I take them. I need to run them, make sure they're all good. These bolts here, when I built the engine, I've drilled and I put dowel pins in to keep it all lined up. And I've bolted it down with metric nuts and bolts. And I've always wanted to change those and put some proper Whitworth nuts and bolts in. And they're proper Whitworth. The nuts are a different shape. It's a much better looking affair altogether. So I'm going to change them out for some Whitworth. I managed to get to the local nut and bowl stockers and they kindly had a good look around in the bowl store departments and found us some Whitworth bolts. I've got to be careful because this bastard thing's heavy. I won't do disasters. That's trying to get us. It really is heavy. There. So I've laid it down flat so it can't go any further. You can see the, the big end bearing now anyway. This is the last one to do. Put a little space on the board to get the correct length. Nobody will know except anybody that watches this video, of course. Sixteenth 
work with is the, the size of them. Right, that's better. Put the base back on and stand it up again. The base is held on with these big gnarly wood screws. Actually made square heads and put square heads on them, so they didn't look like a like a modern a modern fixing. friend Nick actually made this base machine them bits of wood and they look good put these on as supports also harness to help lift it because it is quite a quite a heavy thing right now we've got to stand it up I guess it is quite a fearsome thing Two more of these, that's what they call them, lug bolts. Two more lug bolts, one each side. We'll put some compressed air on it and put some oil into it and give it a run. The bearings on this engine are split brass bushes or split bronze bushes in both main bearings and the big end. The big end is actually fed through a cross drill crank from that main bearing. I've got some modern oil here, 2050, which is thick oil. It should be basically ideal to run this on just as it because it's a total loss on the bearings and the, the steam cylinder is lubricated with special steam oil. I've got a friend who's an agent for Royal Purple and he gave us some of this to try. It's called Royal Purple because it is purple. So you saying he has a little wick which wicks the oil down into the bearing. I'm also going to use this oil to lubricate the Stewart steam engine. That's got a, a crankcase with a proper oil pump inside it. Right. There's also a little low points in various places that need a little splash of oil just to keep things nice and lubricated. There are always dirty, messy things, steam engines. See, so there's just total loss of lubrication. Right, I'll put a little bit of air on and we'll see if it'll run. Taking the quite merrily, makes nice noises as well. This is the other engine I'll be taking. This is a marine type engine with a reversing gear on. This is an engine I built from scratch. Even the castings, everything sort of a one off. This one's got little lubricating jackets and little lubricating oil reservoirs. 
once again these feed through wicks into the crankshaft there's a little oil box on the back of here that feeds through a wick oiler onto the the trunk guide or the crosshead guide we'll put some steam on this one or I will put some water on this one in fact we might even put some air on this one and see if we can get it running this one runs really nice forward and reverse This has got quite a lot of power and um, load it up. It runs even better on steam, it's got a lovely, a lovely crisp beat to it. I'm sure I'll run a purple and do it just this. This will happily push along a boat 15 20 foot long. It's amazing how much power even a small engine like this has. It's a nice slow take over. I'm going to slow the video down in the next little clip so you can actually hear it and watch it run in real slow motion. That's ordinary speed there and now we're going to go into slow motion. Right, once again, it's time to say thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Could you also please share my channel? Um, I'm up to 85,000 views now. It'll be nice to get 100,000 views for Christmas. Anyway, thanks for watching.